Anaija, I'm Vicky James and you're welcome to my space. Come in. <laughs> Okay, so um, this is where all the magic happens and I have all my conversations with my clients and friends in my office so I'm so excited to take you guys there. Okay, so come, let's go. And by the way, you remember this dress, right? Of course you do. <laughs> okay, so let's go upstairs. Okay, Bella and I just, so my office is right there. But this is a very, very wonderful space here in the Vicky James studio or the Vicky James office or space, whatever you want to call it. Um, you can see pictures of some of my designs here. And fun fact, my clients now call this space the Vicky James Wall of Fame. So if you find yourself here, just know that you're famous. <laughs> okay, so this mannequin is standing right here because I was just about working before you guys came. So you guys came at the right time. So I can't wait to see you guys work with me before we have our conversation. So let's go to the office. Okay, Bella and I, Jack. Okay, so welcome to my office. This is my favorite space. Why? Because this is where all the mental work happens okay so i sit right there and my clients sit right here and they talk about their very very beautiful dream dresses and i'm always happy working in here because like this is where all the talent and all the vision that god has embedded in me as a strong independent woman happens okay so i know that we have a lot to talk about bella Lyda, but let me show you one side of fashion that is very interesting let's do some draping Okay, so let's get to work. So, Bella Naija, when it's time for work, I put every shakara aside because I need all the attention that I can get to execute this that is so important to me, okay? So, let's take off my shoes. <laughs> you like my shoes? They're nice, right? Of course they are. That's it. Super comfy. I mean, a lot of people know that I started in Niger Gunle, so did you hold this? So when I started, it was really hard, to be honest. Like, it wasn't easy. But I was determined to succeed. I didn't have a plan B. This was plan A, and plan B was to make plan A work. So, yeah. I was ready for, you know, all, all the challenges and everything that would come my way. And I think that was what um, really helped me to succeed in the fashion business. You must know that you can start small. Um, don't expect to start big, especially when the finances are not there. Uh, most people, I know that most people would say that, but I don't even have small to start with. When I started, um, I was involved in like a lot of other things. I was a makeup artist. I was a lot of things because, I mean, I had a lot of talents and I'm so grateful that I was able to discover some of these talents on time. So I was able to build on them and I made some money from them and I prioritized what was more important which was my future and my success and because of that i was able to save money from like the little monies that i was making so i think first of all prioritize like your future but because by doing that you'll be able to save and you would be able to not spend unnecessarily on things that are not relevant to your future because i would have started buying designer bags and shoes like i just took up my designer shoes they cost a lot of money you know and there, but there was a time where i couldn't wear shoes like that and I knew that it wasn't time yet so don't rush to success because the beauty of success is actually in the journey from like where you start from so be patient with your journey trust God to lead you and guide you and he would never fail you and um, for, uh, for uh, speaking about finances um, how how it worked for me was that apart from like working and um, saving money, I knew I needed to start small. So I started in my mom's parlor. Um, I have a short movie on YouTube that actually showcased my journey from a juggler to Forbes. Um, I got listed on the 30 under 30 Forbes list this year and that's like such a huge part of my success. Like it's, it's, it's such a great height for me and it makes me so, so happy that I put in all the work that I put in to get here. So, um, yeah, I remember when I was still in Aquaibom, schooling in Aquaibom, and I wasn't doing fashion for business, I was just doing fashion for fun. Um, 
I liked making dresses because I was passionate about it. So find what you're passionate about. And there's always something in that thing that you're passionate about. So I remember not having any sewing machine or even anything to make dresses, up, dresses with. And I would just walk around the place where I used to live and just look for people who had tailoring shops. And I will just walk there and just beg them that, please, oh, auntie, please, uncle, can I use your sewing machine to sew something? I promise I will not ruin it. I promise I, I, will, I will just give them maybe 1K or 2K and say, please hold it. If I spoil your machine, you can take the money. And it, that would make them like feel like, ah, it's like this girl knows what she's doing. And they'll give me their sewing machine to use. And from there, you know, just doing that already shows that, you know, this person is called for this. You're passionate about this. You're, you're hung, hungry for success, you know. And by just doing that, you, people might just want to help you. That's, how you. that's how favor comes. Because I remember there was a time I walked into a particular man's store. And when he allowed me to use a sewing machine and I made a dress, he saw the dress. And after then, what he told me was, please don't go anywhere else to to make dresses, always come here. Anytime you, whether I'm around or not, this is your place. And that was the place where I made dresses until I moved to Lagos. I didn't make dresses for money. I only made dresses for myself and for people, you know, that really, you know, people that I loved. And the, I think the only times I made money from sewing was like only when I charged people for the fabrics or the materials and I made like peanuts from them because I didn't see fashion designing as something that I would do because to me it was a poor man's business that's like what my mom did that was my mom's um, um, job and business and we were we were poor like I didn't enjoy I didn't like the kind of life that we lived so to me I was never going to be a fashion designer I preferred doing makeup because I'll just do makeup for one hour I'll collect my money and go I didn't have to buy fabric weights and make dresses you know draw sketch and all of that so it was easy money for me but like I said the beauty is in the struggle the beauty of success is in the struggle and I'm here I'm a fashion designer and this job has changed my life for the better it has changed the life of my family it has changed everything about me it has changed my 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 thinking as a woman it has changed my mindset it has changed my perspective and just how I see life Okay, so I have just finished draping the skirt part of this dress and I still have to do a lot of work on the blouse of this dress. So why don't we go inside so that we can finish our conversation with Bella Niger. Is that good? That's good? Okay, let's go. Okay guys, we're back to the office and um, it's time to talk about her money, her power. So Vicky your account balance for a dress right now, what kind of dress would it be? Um, if my account balance were a dress, I think it would be a very big ball dress <laughs> with a long train. And um, yeah, you know the type of ball dress that when you walk, it flows behind you because the money is flowing. Even if it's not in my account balance, it's like it's always following me. I'm expecting money today. I'm expecting credit alerts from Shopperica, from Vicky James Man, from the Vicky James brand, from my content creation and influencing from so many places. So, yeah, so a very big, flowy, ball dress that shines, you know, because when my clients pay me, they pay me happiness because they can see brightness coming with their money's worth, you know. So, yeah. <laughs> Multiple things of income. Right? <laughs> What does women's economic power mean to you? Um, I know that for a woman to be economically powerful, um, she needs to be financially independent. And um, financial independence is very important for women because when a woman is financially independent, she's, she has power. She can take bold steps. She can make decisions on her own. She can aspire to be anything and actually pursue it with her money and not waiting for anyone to make decisions for her. So I think it's very important for women to be economically powerful. One, one point in my life that I knew or that I realized that I was economically powerful um, was one month after we paid salaries and it dawned on me that I was actually taking care of the salaries of over 30 people. And I've just done five years in business. so. That was the point that I knew that, wow, you, you have just hit that mark, you know, and you're now economically powerful, and it just feels so good. 
Awesome. So what were some of the systemic challenges you faced in becoming a successful fashion designer? Oh, there were a lot, but um, I think the the one that I would that I would never forget would be like the perception of women that that is already in the world today. Um, um, you know that perception that the world has that women cannot be that women cannot take up some some certain roles. Women cannot be leaders in some sectors. Women cannot you know do things on their own. I remember trying to get. Um, um, get a space for my office years back, not once, not twice, like so many times. And they would ask me if I'm married, if I had a husband, you know, they don't want a single woman, that's, they, they, don't, they can't trust us with paying our rent. And I had the money <laughs> to pay my rent, you know. I could even pay for two years or three years as I then. So I'm like, why? Why do women have to go through this? And and it's not even something that has stopped happening. It's still happening to you today because there are some things I want to do with my money. And sometimes I have to call my brother to help me, you know, stay, like, be at the forefront in order for me to actually get that thing. So I feel like th those are, like, the challenges that I face that, that is still stuck in my head. And I really hope that that perception of women changes, that there's a shift in, like, the way people see women or the way the world perceives women. Okay, so were there some key lessons you learned from your experience about women having money and influence? Yeah, I actually learned a lot of lessons when I did have money. Um, I remember when I was in a relationship with someone back then in 2018, and everything was going well. I, I, I was thinking of moving finally back to Lagos from Aquaibom because we started dating when I was in Aquaibom, so I came to visit him in Lagos. And um, I decided to move back because I was already in, in a relationship and I wasn't used to long distance relationships. So I was doing well with makeup in Aquaibom and I was able to save some money. I think I saved about like, maybe like 450K as I then. And when I finally decided to move back, I just packed my things and I came back to Lagos. I was spending some time in this guy's house and everything was fine. You know, he showed me so much love. He told me how much he loved me and he was willing to do anything. I was even talking about marriage. So in my head, I'm like, okay, ah, I've reached my last bus stop, you know. Everything was going fine. And I remember, like, I used to use my, my the small money I had sometimes. Maybe, maybe when he wasn't around, because I'm, I'm not the kind of woman that would ask, always ask a man for money to do things in the house. So not like I was living with him, but I spent, sometimes I spent a week in his place and then I'll go home and spend some time at home and then come back to visit him. My, 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 my mom was aware of our relationship because I wasn't a child. I, I was already out of university and um, yes, yeah, so I was, you know, open with my mom and I told her everything about how this guy, guy likes me. He spoke with my mom as well, so my mom was aware of the relationship. So I would use my money to make food in the house and all of that. So I think at some point, instead of feeling like maybe I was a burden to him because, you know, I was always in the house. Maybe he expected that, you know, after like two months, I should be bringing money to the house. But the truth is that I was actually using my money to do some things in the house. Maybe because I didn't used to ask that, ah, I'm using my money for this, so give me back, you know? I was just doing my thing, you know? So maybe he felt that I would be... I'll become a burden to him when he marries me. I'm no longer doing makeup. I have not decided whether I want to do fashion. I have not decided what I wanted to do yet because I was still thinking about what to do. Because when I moved back to Lagos, it was like a, a phase for me that I just needed like some sort of reset. I've, I've been working all my life, like right, right from primary school, secondary school, university, I was tired. I needed to be sure of the next step that I wanted to take because I left, I left school because I was struggling with my education because I was working, trying to make a living and support my family. So I left school to actually pursue and just use my talents to make money. So it was the moment, it was that, at that, that I was at that phase of my life where I needed to be sure of what I wanted to do. And, just, and in just two to three months of the relationship, he was already feeling like I was going to be a burden. He didn't see the vision that I, I always knew that I was going to be successful. I, I, never, I didn't know how it was going to happen, but he didn't see that vision. So I could remember him asking for a break and he started acting up and treating me some type of way because of this, even if he didn't come out playing to say, 
this is the reason I'm acting like this. So he asked for a break and I went back home and I could remember crying. I was frustrated and, and all of that. And it was at that point that I took the step to becoming a fashion designer. So um, I would say that that was a face of my life that changed my life for good. As at then, I thought that he was being wicked to me. You know, he didn't love me for who I am, but it was a phase in my life that made me realize that, girl, <laughs> you don't get money now, why didn't they do like this? So you need to make money. <laughs> and I remember waking up that morning and telling my mom, mom, I need to take fashion seriously. Let me see. This is something I love. This is something I know I'm talented with, or this is something I know that I'm born with. This is something that I know I'm good at. Let me see where this takes me, you know. I've tried makeup and it's, it's good, but let me, see, let me see how fashion will turn out for me. And I started. And at some point, um, he came back to say, okay, um, let's get back together. I, I remember forgiving him, but then it was still the starting phase. So even the fashion go, you know, still sure whether I go click, we go walk, you know. So after a while, I just just having just when i started making money and i started saving my own money it just made me realize that yo this guy is not the guy for you because if he could treat you like this because in his head he was bringing money for you to cook because there, that was all i didn't ask for anything i didn't ask for bags i didn't ask for shoes i made my hair myself i never asked for anything so if you could act like this because you are feeding me and you in your house. What will happen when you finally marry me? You know? So just having my own money made me see beyond, you know, that position and where I was. It made me take the right step with my relationship. It made me leave him and now I'm married to the best man in the world. Yeah? You know? So having money is very important. So I think that's an experience that I would never forget. <laughs> yeah, and now you are successful. Yes, I am. As a woman, do you think this, having money, has helped amplify your voice and impact in society? Of course, I, I think it has. I know it has because there are a lot of women out there that I know that I inspire as a person and a lot of women out there that I know that the Vicky James brand inspires. And um, just having my own money helped me I helped me start up um, an initiative called the Vicky James Gala. Um, the first edition that um, took, at the first edition, we empowered a fashion designer who was, you know, already doing well. She was a startup fashion brand. She was doing well. We empowered her with, I think, we empowered like over, I think about three fashion designers with over, over, I think the total money that we spent and the things that we gave out to empower all these people were like, was like maybe almost five million naira, you know. And till tomorrow when they see me, when, she, when the first winner sees me, she's always like, Vicky, thank you so much for, for, for you know, for the Vicky James Gala. It has changed my life. I, at, at, the, at the Vicky James Gala as well, we had the bride of the gala and we took care of almost everything that had to do with her wedding and that made her like very happy and I see her every time I see her she always reminds me of the fact that just you know just um, what we did for her for her wedding really really changed her life and made her happy and um, um, and um, yeah with just being so and with being successful and with making my own money having my money up and building my brand to the stage where I am today as helped me start like the Vicky James masterclass that has helped, you know, impact in the lives of so many fashion designers who want to be successful, has helped grow their brand, has helped me to be able to teach them and show them how to make their own money. And they, they own, they, and the only reason why they come for the Vicky James masterclass is because they can actually see there's evidence. It's not word of mouth. <laughs> they can actually see that, you know, this woman has been able to work herself all the way up in the space of five years. And if she was able to do that, she can teach me how to do that. Or she can tell me how, share her experiences with me. So, yeah wife, a designer, and a creator, do you think that having money helps you pursue your dreams and manage the work at the same time? Um, yeah, I think having money really helps women manage their home, manage their businesses, because um, I have a lot of staff working for me now, and that makes my life easy. That helps me to, you know, balance work life and my personal life, because with the money that I've been able to make, I've been able to employ people that will make that easy for me. I have 
assistants, I have admins, I have people in charge of the factory, I have people in charge of the office, I have video editors, people I call to take videos and pictures for my content and for all other things that I do. So yeah, I think money is, money is very important when it comes to like women balancing work life and balancing home life because I can enjoy whatever I want to enjoy when I want it. I can eat anything I want to eat when I feel like it. So yeah, money is very important when so it comes so to let's that. Talk pricing. How can more women build the confidence to charge their worth? Um, how women can build the confidence to charge their worth is by, first of all, building value and giving value. You cannot just wake up one morning and say you want to charge your worth. What are you worth? Have you invested in yourself? You need to invest in yourself. You need to keep improving your skills. You need to keep learning and learning and unlearning. You know, you need to keep evolving. So these are the things that need to be put in place. And then after that, you give value, set values for your brand, give value, and let, the, let your clients see the value that you actually bring to the table, you know, and they would be happy to pay your price, okay? Work hard, be consistent at it, show people what you are made of. Don't just sit back, relax, and expect people to know that you are talented. No, show them the talent, show them what you bring to the table. Social media is there, take advantage of it, show people your work, let them see, be, let them see your mind, because people cannot tell what your mind can think of. People can't tell how broad your mind is if you don't show them the things that your mind can do. A lot of people trust me with my work now because I've been able to show them the things that my mind can do. I've been able to show them that my mind can actually think beyond the ordinary mind, beyond what just any fashion designer would do. So in whatever sector you find yourself, whatever career you find yourself, show people what your mind is made of. Show people why they should pay you what you are charging. Show people how much time you invest into your work. Show people the efforts that you put in, the lengths that you would go, you know, both globally and even in the country where you are. Show people what you would do to invest in your brand and why they should pay your price. So Vicky, if you were to leave town for business for say three to seven months, okay. do you think your husband would be in support of this? A hundred percent. Of course he would support anything that I decide to do. My husband supports everything that I decide to do and um, I think that's where the choice or that's where the topic of choosing the right partner comes comes in because I mean um, before I decided to settle down I already knew what my life is like um, and what my life would be like you know in the future so and I think that's what like um, fueled my decision of the kind of partner that I wanted to end up with Personally, I don't think that I would want to be away for three to seven months without my husband. So, you know, when I was choosing a partner, I made sure that I chose a partner that when the time for stuff like that comes together, we would be able to figure out a way for us to be together. You know, I wanted to be with a partner that I would always be with. I never, I did, I never, I never saw myself with a husband that would not be available or... I never saw myself in a marriage where I would not be available or my husband would not be available. So I think that's where like personal choices comes in. Before you settle with a partner, know what you want, right, in this partner. Make sure that this partner is somebody that you know would be able to accommodate your excesses, a partner that would be able to stay with you, support you, because I know that marriage takes more than love and after love for me, I think it's support that comes next. And yeah, and that's one thing that I have a lot in my home or in my marriage or in my, in my relationship. And that's the reason why I'm able to do all the things that I do. Most people say that, oh, how do you do it? How do you balance work, life, cooking, da, 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 da. I have a husband that supports me. So it makes it easy. Yeah, he would definitely support me. So Vicky, have you enjoyed this conversation? I have enjoyed every stage of this conversation it's been you know it's been amazing it's been interesting it's been impactful right yeah it's just been fun i've had fun hi everyone i am your favorite girl vicky james make sure that you follow the conversation her money her power okay get your money up ladies because you can get that life that you want for yourself and i wish you all all the very best